Cal Lawton Jr. Hey, good morning everyone. Now, unless you have been living under a rock, you will have noticed that Barry and I, Spook and G-Man, have been organizing and preparing ourselves for an amazing trek from the north of India in a place called Jay Salma, trekking all the way to the south to Cochin. And we thought what we're going to do from here on then is give an opportunity for you to have a, a look at where we've been, what we've been doing, and how we've been getting there. The first thing we want to talk about is that the reason why we're doing this little trek. And um, I think Barry knows the reason why more than I do. Gerald and I did an adventure across Peru a few years back. Some of you followed along with that on the motor taxi junket. We decided it was time to do another one uh, and uh, race rickshaws all the way from across the top north part of India all the way down to the tippy point in the south, all to raise money for our favorite wildlife conservation and animal welfare charities. Uh, so there's four, four we're raising money for. Uh, you can find out the information, all the information on uh, secondtonone.info has all the information about the charities we're, ra we're racing for. And I'll tell you what, this, this journey is going to change our lives. <laughs> don't ever say that, don't ever say it's going to. And Rudy, if you are watching this, I do have my obligatory shot glass, but it's very hard to find scotch here. So I might just have to put chai on this when we order breakfast. Uh, right now here in Jay Salmer, it's about 7.30. And um, let's go way back one week. We started this trek off about uh, six, seven days ago in Brisbane. Now departing Brisbane's always very smooth, isn't it? Passport control, everything's good. Immigrations is fine. And we get to check our seating. So of course, Barry, who's a, uh, who flies for an airline, uh, is also a captain of that airline. So he gets put in a premier seat next to a very beautiful girl. And they put a G-Man <laughs> in amongst, <laughs> in amongst. I had this smelly little 13 year old kid who couldn't stop farting the whole time. And that's what they put me in. And I said, but I'm G-Man. And they went, I don't care. Even though they were, they were English staff. I don't know why they were speaking so Indian. So my, my cunning plan worked perfectly is what he's trying to say. It, it was it was a perfect plan. Then the one night in Singapore we had was that amazing for us? Oh, it's good, life changing. It was life changing because <laughs> we we just wanted to go and have a Singapore sling somewhere. We didn't end up doing that. We went to the old Sarte Club or the Newton Circus. Some of you old people might know that, but it has been changed now and transformed into a huge marketplace. And uh, we had we just had a nice simple meal. We did satays and beer. Oh, I and mean, what do you, else do you have at a Sarte Club except satays and the and the local beer? So leaving Singapore, we then left Singapore and we flew to Delhi. Everyone seems to be telling us, you know, oh, be careful and watch out. You might get Delhi belly and make sure you take lots of Imodium. Like seriously, Step in a pussy. the one thing that you will not find over here, come closer people. The one thing you will not find over here are snowflakes. Yeah, there's no snowflakes here. Everyone just gets on with their shit uh, and hustles. Doing their own thing. Delhi then to Agra was a nine hour drive. No. Eight to it's a four hour drive. It felt like nine hours. It felt like nine hours. <laughs> Lovely man, go Paul. He was a driver. He was. Got us to, uh, got us to Agra. So we uh, checked in a hotel in Agra with the plan of being up early. First light, sunrise at the Taj Mahal, which ah. was fucking amazing. Like, I'm not easily impressed but when you walk through the gate and you see that courtyard in that building it was just amazing there is something special about going to a place where you know it is one of the man-made wonders of the world and you you see it in all the postcards postcards whoever buys a postcard you see it in all the pictures all the movies you know from india and you just think oh yeah that's the taj and when you get up close and personal and actually see the 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 architecture of how it's made, I think that really starts to change the way that you see uh, and appreciate things. So I guess for us... An amazing craftsmanship. Amazing. Yeah, it, it kind of like hurts. 22 years to build. And along the way, as, you, as you're watching this, we're, we're, we're throwing in lots of pictures, you know, of the, of the site and the monument. We were there on a, on a weekday and it wasn't like we were getting hassled. Uh, we had an official come up and you can tell the officials they've got a red tag on. And they were pretty cool and they just said, you know, you come with us. I think it cost us like uh, two or three dollars to have him guide us around the Taj, which was, which was worth it. You know, the whole thing was uh, was really worth it. 
And so when they say, you know, watch out for all the hawkers, you know, we experienced it when we went over to the fort, but it was like, you know, go away. He does it well, you know, go away. Go, go. What do we do after that? After we finish with Agra, we kind of like thought it's getting close to what we really want it to come for. So we did a, uh, a drive again from Agra to Matura. Matura, so Wildlife SOS, one of the charities that we're sponsoring, yeah, they do a lot of work uh, in wildlife conservation for sloth bears and leopards, elephants. Um, they have an elephant conservation and care center in Mathura, just about an hour and a half drive outside of Agra. So we were lucky enough to let, have them invite us up there to, uh, to meet with their staff and uh, meet the elephants as well. Uh, we'll be putting together a whole video about that, which we'll put up soon. Uh, but it was another fantastic experience. The people who were there were so generous with their time, uh, educating us to the plight of elephants uh, in, in India. 98% of the wild elephants are gone in India, 98%. And you know, since one, they're one of the, one of the top of the uh, food chain species in this country, you know, that has follow-on effects throughout the entire ecosystem of the country. And they told us some heartbreaking stories about um, the, the begging elephants and the riding elephants here in India. So the, those uh, elephants that you see outside the temples and the tourist places uh, that are either begging for money or they're trying to sell you rides on them, those animals have been beaten and tortured for decades, sometimes as much as 50 years. They're taken as babies, uh, starved and beaten until their spirit is broken, and they continue to be uh, used as slaves, uh, beaten uh, on a daily basis, chained up, uh, spikes around their legs. Uh, the, the ones we saw, Asha, and some of the other elephants we saw, just covered in scars. Uh, and injuries that are never going to heal, broken uh, hips and, and broken feet because they're forced to walk on pavement, live in cities and slums, you know, well outside their natural environment. They're extremely intelligent and gentle and very, uh, form very complex social structures. They're very social, herd-oriented animals forced to live uh, lives of solitude, slavery in a city which, you know, ne they never get to be an elephant because somebody wants to exploit them for a few rupees. It's fucking disgusting. So we really wanted to, uh, to meet those people and have a chance to support those people. Um, and your donations, none of it comes to us, it goes straight through to all the charities that we support. All this trip's being paid for every single penny out of, uh, of our own. Uh, but every single penny that you donate is gonna go straight to these charities. Uh, and I can't think of a better one than Wildlife SOS. I think one of the things that people say is that when they can't actually donate the funds to us, we don't mind. It's, it's really about sharing the, the, this sort of a video to other people, but you'll see a sign that we're, we're both holding up there, which is when you go and visit any of the, say, African nations where they have an African elephant or the Asian uh, elephants, it's just refused to ride. It's one of the, ride. The, one of the things that I think a lot of people want to do is they want to jump on top of the elephant, they want to get a great height. Well, go into a building. Go and walk on top of a building like where we are, and you'll get even a better view. So refuse to ride the elephants or, or any animal that you just think that shouldn't be right. That's just not right to do. So for the, for the best part of, of our trip is that when we saw that sign that said refuse to ride, it, it gave us a sense that it said, you don't have to spend a lot of money to donate to charities. Just let the people know when they're going overseas is, hey, I know you're gonna go on an elephant trip. You're gonna see some elephants, but just refuse to ride. It's probably easier. And one of the most heartbreaking stories that we hear is that how they get an elephant <clears throat> to carry people so they can have the elephant go close to tigers. And so, I mean, I can't even speak about that. It was just, it's just horrific. So they want, they, what, they what? want to get people to see tigers uh, up, in, uh, up close in these uh, wildlife sanctuaries. So they put them on top of an elephant and they force this elephant to walk up to tigers, like totally against every natural instinct that that elephant's gonna have, just so people can get a little bit of a thrill about being close to a tiger. Like seriously, if you wanna go and see a tiger, go and see it. see a fucking tiger. Yeah, go and yourself. see it, just jump out see, of the jeep and go you, and get up close. See like walking up next to a tiger. Um, but Gerald brought up a book, good point. You know, we'd love to have your money, we'd love to have your donations so we can help these charities, so you can help these charities with us. Uh, but if you can't, if you're in a place where you can't afford to donate, uh, or you still you have donated, and you still want to help us, please share this journey out with as many people as you can. The more eyes that we get on uh, our great rickshaw race across India, uh, the more potential donors we're going to have, and the, the more good we can do uh, in the world as well. So, if you can't donate, then please uh, please like and share with everyone that you know. So we spent a good uh, two and a half to three hours, and and the uh, Shivam who who took us around the place. Um, he's going Pretty to be, close. yeah great, he's going to share this video also uh, with his team at Wildlife SOS. And so I, I guess for us is that 
visiting one of the places that we know that we're going to support and donate to or you are going to help us donate to really gives us a sense of pride that we're not only going to have a wild crazy fun here in a couple of days as we head down on these mad tuk-tuks but um, it also gives us a sense of pride that we're doing our little bit our just our little bit to uh, to help these beautiful creatures uh, along the way we left Matura and then we headed to this uh, well we headed to uh, Jaipur, wasn't it? Yeah, we jumped in a car with Gopal again for another five-hour five-hour drive through Indian traffic. Uh, traffic. To Jaipur, uh, man, that was another epic drive. I think I think there's Barry was saying while we were in the in the car, he said, "What's the most useless job in India?" And that would be the guy that paints the lines in the road, the lane markers. There's no point. And I think <laughs> also no point at all. I think also another pointless job here in, in India would be the guy who writes the road rules. There's, there, but, it, but you, know, you know the difference is that there's probably one rule that's in the rule book, which is don't hit anything. Don't hit anything. And it works. We can walk, uh, we'll show you later, we can walk across a busy street that looks insane. All you gotta do is just start walking. Nobody wants to hit you. And they'll all just kind of around you. That's the, that's the key we're not sharing with the rest of the teams. There is a, there is a system to the traffic. Yeah. Just nobody wants to hit you. There is no system. Got to be aggressive, get out there, and everyone will just go around. Well, you'd hope. I think the two most blessed people in the, uh, on this planet are people like us, for example, who get opportunities to do this, and cows. Cows, cows got a good here. They got a good, they, they, you'll see some pictures around here, we're just scratching them. We, uh, we arrived then in Jaipur, and it was pretty late. I think we got there, oh, you know, grandma, grandpa time, grandma, grandpa time. We got there about uh, seven o'clock in the evening. We wanted to have some dinner because you know, feeling a bit hungry, and we don't can't live on chips and biscuits all day. So Barry gets on the old app, has a look for a restaurant that's close by, and we found one. Oh, it was so good! Little tiny hole in the wall. All the locals were in there, or a couple locals were in there. Some guy with about three teeth uh, serving as the waiter. Uh, they graciously brought us in. We ordered some stuff off the menu. The best food. You, you so can't, good. You, you can't imagine. We've got the menu items of what we had, number 156 and number 157. 157 rocks, by the way. 156 is pretty good too. But what you'll, what you'll see is uh, you'll actually see the spread and have a look at that spread. Mm. The, the cost, I think, was a little, was just a little steep. A long price side. I think we paid how much for both those meals? $7. $7. Altogether, $3.50 each. And what you're seeing, what you're seeing was just at the beginning of the yeah, meal they where we just, more. they brought more. It was like, come on, man, because I think we kept eating and so they kept good. feeding. Um, to see how much food the white guys could eat. So we are. This is where we're at now, and I don't know if you can see in the background. Just move a little bit to yeah, in the background there. That is the fort. That is the J Selma fort. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to get too excited about it. It's okay. But J Selma is nice, man. It's got a lot more character oh, than the yeah. rest of the places we've been. Uh, really cool, really cool town. Actually. Did it change your perspective of India? Yeah, I kind of had a fuck India vibe going before I got here. You did, didn't I you? Did. But I changed my mind. I like it now. I like it. We call it the Triple S. It's the Triple S. It's the sights, smells, and sounds. And people feed you lots of crap. They go, oh, you watch out for people this. People have never been here from now. And you go, really? Really? Where did you go? I go, we went to Mumbai or, or, or Bombay, old Bombay. And you go, really? Just get out of the place and go and have a look at something else. And, and again, yeah, we are a little bit blessed because we're in this north part of India, which just really has this. So why are we here as we start to wrap up this part of the video? And we are going to be giving you daily updates and we hope to be sharing with you our trek along the way because again, it is life changing. Um, we hear that one more time. Uh, maybe one more time. So yesterday we got the first look at the tuk-tuk. We went to the palace where we're gonna be starting from. Uh, and what a massive site. There was 83 tuk-tuks all lined up in a giant U-shape. We'll show you a picture. Um, amazing. I didn't realize there was going to be that many teams. I thought there was going to be about 50. But the site of 83 tuk-tuks lined up shoulder to shoulder was pretty impressive. Uh, we found ours. Uh, the guys showed us around the tuk-tuk, gave us a little tuk-tuk tour. Uh, tuk-tuk tour. Tuk-tuk tour. And we jumped in the rickshaw and uh, we did a little bit of test driving around the test track. Uh, just to get comfortable with how it all works. Uh, and I like it. We don't have a name for it yet, but I'm feeling it's kind of a hymn as opposed to Rosa. A hymn? As opposed to Rosa last time. Because it's rough. Because he's good. He's a beast, man. I like him. 
it, he was uh, it's a lot I like it a lot better than the moto taxi we had in Peru uh, anyway feeling a bit more confident yeah so we had the Ricky Bobby paint job on there which looked fucking how does awesome. it look tell us how it looks it looks awesome um, and then we we painted our sponsor so we like to thank our corporate sponsor active campaign you can find them at activecampaign.com uh, they generously donated five thousand uh, dollars to our causes uh, which we appreciate so very much so we painted some of their branding on the tuk tuk just to give them a shout out uh, and you'll see that so we got the guy to come over and paint that on there and then of course we painted our call signs on either side just to be ready to go uh, in the cockpit of the mighty rickshaw when it's time to go and you'll see that as well so pretty excited today we're gonna head out we're gonna find some spare parts we're gonna find some bits and pieces we're gonna need for our trip uh, and then we're gonna get everything ready for the party tonight and we also want to thank uh, one of our anonymous uh, donors who graciously mr. M thank you so much mr. Robert. M you know who you are mate thank you so much you know that was seven and a half thousand dollars of uh, of your hard well hard-earned cash this is that's your stuff but mate we we're not uh, we, we just want to acknowledge that you have done that and for everyone else you know that's uh, that's put their donations in and like I've said earlier on if everyone donates five dollars we would reach that target quite easily in fact if all of my 50,000 subscribers on YouTube was to donate one dollar we would have our fifty thousand dollars so there's no there's no amount too big there's no amount too small but if you also have a challenge that you want us to do and we have here's the photo we've actually slept together so <laughs> you you wanted it there's your five dollars worth thanks very much but um, look stay tuned it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an epic trek and uh, we're going to have lots of mayhem and fun all right stay tuned for the mighty party footage for tomorrow and uh, and for the launch footage Sunday is go day gun goes off and it's 3,000 K's down to the pointy southern tip of India and we're happy to have you following along cheers Rudy cheers it's Rudy a, it's a virtual scotch <laughs>